First ever goalless draw at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, remarkably. Mm. Simon Hulbert says, how do I get my son to forgive me after I took him to Tottenham Milan? Jeffrey David says, what is the point of Spurs getting into the Champions League when the manager doesn't set the team up to attempt to score a goal for 150 minutes out of 180 minutes of knockout football? Crikey. Yeah, I mean, the whole this whole Champions League campaign has been really quite joyless. And I, and I remember for Spurs... Mm. And I remember... That one game against Marseille, perhaps. That, yeah, Mar- Marseille was great. Um, but otherwise, I remember thinking... I think it was the sporting game and they were losing at home. And I was just like, th- what was the point? You know, you think of the Champions League, this holy grail. And then when you're in it, I was kind of like, is anyone actually enjoying this? It didn't really, it, honestly, it really didn't seem like it. Everyone was miserable. I was like, this may as well be a Europa League group game or a conference seat there in last season. And I think that joylessness has contributed to why a lot of fans were so angry about, you know, almost throwing that Sheffield United Cup game. All right. Whereas in previous years, there might be an understanding of, well, the same thing happened last season. They lost to Middlesbrough, but it was like, well, you know, but it might help the top four and top four was this panacea. Once we get there, you know, everything's going to be okay. And then you get it and you're like, oh, it actually doesn't change all that much unless you properly kick on. You're still in just this spiral of going for the top four. And so I think that's why fans, this is like, no, we want to win something like top four Champions League hasn't even been that great for us this year and and especially they weren't helped because their group was quite uninspiring they didn't really have any it was the Europa League group it was it really was and to be honest the quality of this tie was very Europa mm. League mm. you know and fair play to Milan they did as much they didn't need to do any more than that but um, yeah I just think it was so flat and you know you think back to their first Champions League campaign 10-11 under Harry Redknapp where you know what you want when you make that step up is to go and enjoy it to feel like this great adventure and you're showing the world wow look what we can do Leicester when they had their Champions League campaign and Spurs have had one since you know when they reached the final in, in 18-19 but it's, yeah it's just been but so uninspiring if you think about it Spurs ground is probably the best ground in the world right and that's the, the peak competition in football so that should be that should have been a great demonstration of football last night and it was mm. absolutely not I mean I don't support Spurs but I was so angry by the end just like do You're something angry drunk well, just, I've like, never I'm seen not, Duncan angry like, not angry mildly <laughs> you know Urked. aggrieved yeah yeah urked. Because they they didn't do anything. It right. was just there was that late cane chance mm. that the ball yeah. a great save from Mania. But otherwise it was Milan who had the best opportunities here as in the first leg, no? There was a point, I think about fifty odd minutes into it, where their their Spurs previous shot in target shot on target in the tie was in the seventy fifth minute at Milan. It was like Well Milan did defend well. Yeah. It, it wasn't all uh, Spurs' inability to score, but e- equally, uh, there didn't seem to be the impetus, the drive, or even the tactical decisions of a, of a team that desperately needed to turn a tie around. The fans p- getting particularly upset at the decision to take off uh, Kulusevski and bring on... That was uh, Sanchez. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair, to Con- Romero had been sent off. It wasn't a total, right. um, a totally strange call to make. But yeah, you know, the optics of that are terrible. I think what's so frustrating is it played out as everyone feared it would, that, you know, they've... So many games Spurs have been bad in the first half... Um, even their recent wins, you know, West Ham and Chelsea were nil nil at half time, and there's a sense that uh, Conte is almost fine with that. It's like, yeah, you know, first half we'll let that drift, but then we'll we'll go and win it in the second half. But you know, this was a Champions League last sixteen tie, and yeah, it just felt like it completely passed them by. Conte in six seasons of Champions League football has only ever won a knockout tie once. Mm. Remarkable. That was his first one as well, wasn't it? First so season, all the way back in probably would have been, yeah. yeah. The, it's just it's just so methodical, isn't it? That's the, that's the problem. There's not not really that urgency to get on the front foot and attack, which is staggering when you think. And I think we all agree that the strength of this Spurs side is Harry Kane. And, and Son and Kulisevsky, right? Well, okay, but you mentioned Son there, who's who's not been that Son for no, a while. No. Should should Richarlison maybe have started in Son's place? There's one person who certainly thinks yeah. so is Richarlison, <laughs> yeah, who yeah. described his, his season as, excuse my language, a shit. Uh, and <laughs> basically outlined the fact that he was told that he was going to be starting this game yeah. and it hasn't happened and he's a bit bewildered with how yeah. this is going. I understand it because Son hasn't exactly been brilliant, has he? But... 
Richarlison hasn't delivered that much when he's been out on the pitch. Mm. Two goals either. all in one game against Marseille but, but, in but, but, September. But my, if I was a Spurs fan, I wouldn't be upset with Richarlison. I wouldn't be upset with, with, with Son. I'd be upset with a hierarchy for hiring three of the most defensive managers around. In Jose Mourinho, Nuno Espirito Santo, and now Antonio Conte. These are all guys that, that, that don't want or don't tend to have that many creative players on the pitch. <laughs> Is it a surprise? And, and when yeah. your three best players are forwards, you're, not, you're just not getting the touches. that Those three star players, especially Harry Kane, is not getting enough involvements in, in matches to make the difference. And for me, Spurs need an attack-minded manager. Mm. Or a more certainly more flexible one. I mean, I, I do think as well, given how much Conte's achieved, I think it's, it's fair enough to be a little bit underwhelmed and disappointed with that lack of tactical flexibility. I, you know, it's fine to have a favoured system, but it just really doesn't seem like that is the best system for this team and for those players. And to persist with it again and again, you know, the evidence is there. And even, you know, yesterday they brought on Pedro Porro. He made a difference finally having, you know, a re- an attacking wing back with a lot of thrust. Um, but again, it felt a bit too late. Mm. Out of the Champions League, at least you can concentrate on, well, what exactly, Charlie? Huh? Spurs? Top four. Top four. Get back into this competition and then... Let the circle begin. Like, yeah. Well, I, I said, I made the point yesterday, so it reminds me a bit of that late era Wenger mm. Arsenal, where they did that, where they kept coming fourth to go out in the last 16 and then re- repeat Munich. to fade. Yeah, or Barcelona, whichever one they drew that year. I mean, and someone made the point to me, well, yeah, they were winning FA Cups, which is true. They weren't always. There was a big, you know, nine-year was, drought yeah, as well. Yeah. But it did remind me because a lot of Arsenal fans, I remember at that time, were similarly like, we'd rather win the FA Cup or something than just mm, than right. this. Well, we have planes flying well, over the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Mm-hmm. So. But also there's some Spurs fans I've seen saying, well, I mean, there's not many left, to be honest, but some saying, well, you know, we should give Conte more time because Arteta's had time and look what he's doing now. But I think the difference is that Arteta is like a massive Arsenal fan and he's desperate to succeed there. Mm. You don't really get that impression. Do you not? Conte. No, <laughs> I don't know. It's my, just a vibe. Yeah. My completely impartial view is that Spurs should absolutely give Antonio <laughs> Conte more time. Give him another year. Give him two. I, I do think there are going to be clubs who, because you're seeing it with Potter as well at Chelsea, there are going to be clubs who use the Arteta example mm. and really get it wrong you know Arteta he they backed him and they were right to back him that doesn't always mean you should back your you manager you saw it in the Ferguson Wenger era clubs you know yeah. bottom of leagues going well if, yeah, they, look if, at Ferguson. if Arsenal can get Wenger <laughs> yeah. this time it's like yeah that's slightly different but, but what, what Spurs need is young assets in the team don't they that's what they lack you know Arsenal, Arsenal have got Arteta a young manager but they've also got a series of young assets that have come through the academy that, that are tearing it up. They've bought young players that were pretty good to start with, but their best years are ahead of them. I think that's got to be the recruitment model for Spurs moving forward, especially given that the best players that we're, we're talking about, Kane and Son in particular, mm. are getting on a bit, you know, and they might not stick around. And they might be moving on a bit Exactly. As well. I think mm. that it's the perfect time for a builder to come in really so, I mean yeah. to, be, to be fair reset you think a reset yeah, but, yeah. but that but that again you mean, you mean a football man not an actual builder <laughs> no no <laughs> yeah. the stadium's fine um, just the football on show there but but that's the, exactly the disconnect that you're that you described there because Paratici the director of football that is his approach yeah. you know bring in younger guys build for the future etc but then you bring in a win now manager who doesn't and want to use them? Who doesn't want to use them? So they signed Jed Spence in the summer. Mm-hmm. Conte told us in Korea it was a club signing. Those were his words. Before the signing even been confirmed, basically disowning himself of this young guy coming in. And it's just, and he's now on loan for the second half of the season, having barely played in the first half of the season. So it's like you're trying... It's like imagine Arsenal having that strategy, but then having Mourinho or someone in charge and being like, well, I don't want Ben White. I want someone who can, you know, who can hit the ground running. But, Crikey. Well, may not be a situation that continues for too much longer by all accounts. So this weekend, Spurs are at home to Nottingham Forest. Duncan, following those disappointing performances against Sheffield United, Wolves and now Milan. Yeah, I mean, Forest are pretty bad away from home, which might help matters. Yes. But, I mean, this fixture reminds me of Teddy Sheringham, and I think... Does it not remind you of the 91 mm. FA Cup well, final? Well, I think actually. Romero did a sort of gaza star <laughs> wild challenge last <laughs> night, to be fair to him, and then had to... Um, Turpan spent, what, 15 minutes before giving him the red card, which was <laughs> nice to see. But the Teddy Sheringham thing, I think, is quite interesting in the sense that he was a, a striker, not dissimilar in, in some ways to Harry Kane, in the way he played, 
but he had, he always knew when to change clubs, and I think that's mm. the decision Harry Kane has has got to come to this summer. I think. Um, so yeah, there's a. I think there won't be a, a lack of suitors for Harry Kane if if he does move on. Well, okay. my my co- on sharing it, my colleague James Moore has made the point. He's a Spurs fan. He's made the point. Um, could Kane do what Sheringham did? You know, Sheringham went to United, won everything, had a fun few years, and then came back. Mm. You know, could. Uh, I wonder if Kane would follow a similar trajectory. You can mm. sort of imagine it. Because I don't think he, at this point, he wouldn't burn bridges at Spurs by moving. No. I think everyone gets it now. Well, and then have a final hurrah. I guess we'll see. The Totally Football Show podcast is available three times a week, bringing you all the football news you could reasonably be expected to care about. We've got views, we've got stats, we've got analysis, we've got some of the best football writers around. And the whole thing is absolutely free. So have a listen on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or all the usual places by clicking on the link below.